I might just be the first Boltonian to ever speak on a TED stage. So, no pressure. Uh, so when we think of compassion, we usually think of people like the Dalai Lama, a religious figure, a doctor, a nurse, or some kind of healthcare professional. When was the last time that you actually thought of yourself when you thought of compassion? When was the last time you acted in a compassionate way? Now, I've been researching compassion for the last three years or so, mainly in healthcare settings. Um, but it's along my own journey, the journey it took for me to get here, where I experienced my own problems, my own suffering, that, and the people that helped guide me along that journey, that I learned more about compassion than any book or any article could ever teach me. Not only did they show me compassion, they taught me what compassion means, you know, to actually feel compassion, to know the kind of impact that can have on your life. And the word compassion comes from the Latin, the two Latin words, come and pate, which means to be with suffering. Now I think we need to be more than just being with that suffering, we need to do something about it. And in order to go from being to doing something about suffering, we need an agent. An agent is defined as a person who does something on behalf of another, or a person or thing that causes some kind of change or effect. Now the people that I've that have helped me along my journey are what I call an agent of compassion. So what I'm going to do today is talk to you about five things that these people have taught me that I think we can all learn from so we too can become an agent of compassion. Now the first thing is awareness. How often do we pass people by each and every day without actually taking notice of them? How often do we miss an opportunity to act with compassion, to save someone, to just be there for them, to do something. So what I'm proposing is that we start to take notice. We, we open our eyes, we, we become more aware of our surroundings and the people that we interact with every day or, or pass by every day. I mean, some people say that we need to practice mindfulness to become compassionate. But I don't think it has to be like that. It's, it can be simpler. We can just become more mindful, just become more aware. And the second thing is to practice being wiser in our judgments. We understand that we've evolved with this ability to make judgments because it helps us navigate through our environments, helps us keep, to keep us safe from possible threats. But what I've noticed is that we, we, said we tend to make more snap judgments when it comes to people. And rather than make these judgments and ju judge people negatively, to become more wiser in our judgment of other people because we don't know what that, uh, that person's been through. We don't know their story. We don't know what it's took for them to get where they are today. But we could also change it around a little bit as well in, in a wiser way, a little bit like Yoda, as we heard earlier. We could start to see the potential in people, see what a person could be rather than what they seem to be on the surface. And the third thing is communication. We, we've got this amazing ability to communicate, to get what's in our heads into the heads of others. You know, we can, but what if we practice getting what's inside our hearts into the hearts of others, to communicate more compassionately, to, you know, we can, the language we use is important. You know, how often do we say to someone, uh, are you okay, are you all right, when clearly they're not, clearly they're in distress, clearly they're in need of assistance. What if we start asking, you know, we do something a bit more radical. We start asking, what can I do for you? How can I be of assistance to you? How can I help you today? And, and then we can also communicate non-verbally. A simple smile. A smile can let another person who you know that you see them, that they exist. The way we present ourselves as well. An open posture, a more compassionate posture that says, I am here, you know, I, I embrace you as another human being. And again, the things we say, we can communicate more, more positively. And one of the most powerful things that's ever been said to me, and what I consider to be very compassionate, is that I believe in you. I believe in you. Trust me, that one sentence is enough to change someone's life. 
And the fourth thing, and probably the most important, is courage. The courage to move beyond something greater than ourselves. To move beyond our own suffering, our own pain, our own vulnerabilities, our own anxieties, our own nerves, in the service of something greater than ourselves. Another human being. To be there for someone when they need it most. To not only say something needs to be done about that, but to actually do something. To act compassionately. And the fifth and final thing is patience. These things take time. Learning takes time. Healing takes time. But don't give up. Don't give up on yourselves. Don't give up on others. Don't give up on things that really matter to you. Because, you know, you will make mistakes. You will fall. But you can't stop. You've got to keep going. And what I've learned from my experience is that sometimes to get to the right place, have to go the wrong way but keep going we must and if compassion is there to help guide you then you will get there so that's five things that you can practice and the beauty is you can practice these things on yourself you can become aware of how you feel how you judge yourself but become wiser in your judgment of yourself to question any negativity but then to transform that into a communication that says wait a minute i can do this you know how many speakers today have probably been in the back saying i can do this I can do this. But you can, you know, and you are worthy. Say, I am worthy. I can do this. I believe in me. But then to give yourself the courage to be compassionate to yourself, but to ask for compassion when you need it most. Because as an agent of compassion, you will also need compassion yourselves. Because you are human and you will suffer. But you can give yourself that compassion and you can also give yourself the patience. So, these are the five things. The five things that I've shared with you today, what make an agent of compassion. Now, we usually think of agents as people like James Bond, and some of you might even be thinking of Mulder and Scully, but you know, maybe not. In fact, an agent looks nothing like that and acts nothing like that. An agent is just like you. Everyone in this room is an agent. In fact, some of the agents who've helped me along my journey are here today. I just want to say a big thank you to each and every one of you for everything you've done. Because of you, I am here today. So, although you're an agent of compassion and you don't have a glamorous mission like James Bond, I am going to give you a mission. And it's a simple three-part mission. The first part is I want you to practice these five things each and every day. Even if you do one thing at a time, just keep practicing it. Practice, practice, practice. Because another thing I've learned is that practice does not make perfect, but it does make things happen. And that is what we need. We need more people to be compassionate. Because compassion sets us free. Compassion changes lives. And the second part of your mission. Every day before you go about your day, I want you to think of one thing, just one thing you can do for another person. It can be anyone. A friend, a family member, a colleague, a student, a patient, a neighbor, even the ones you don't like, it can be a stranger. It's one thing you can do for one, for, for one person or the people that you meet because it's one more thing that wasn't there yesterday. And the third and final part of the mission. Well, all agents need to report back to HQ. Everyone needs to report in, so you're going to report back to me. I've set up this email here. If you need it, write it down quickly. If not, don't worry. Write down that you want the email and someone will send it to you. But tell me what you've been doing. Tell me how you've acted and know that you're this agent of compassion. Tell me what you've done. Tell me how the people responded. You know, tell me something I've not told you today. You know, let's start sharing this. Let's like start making this more of a reality. More agents of compassion. Because I'd love to see that. I'd love to see, like, I know that we need compassionate practitioners. But I think more importantly, we need compassionate people. So if we can start sharing this, so we, we have more compassionate schools, more compassionate universities, more compassionate organizations. You know, eventually, we might just create a pathway and create a new world, a more compassionate world. At the very least, we might just change someone's life. And... To prove that, this is, these two photos, one is me graduating with a first class honours degree, 
and the other is me class uh, graduating with a, a distinction from my master's in psychology. And the people that are there with me are, are just some of my agents of compassion. They help me get where I am today. And before I go, I'd just like to leave you with this one final thought. And that is, Ted talks about ideas worth spreading. And I think that compassion is definitely an idea worth spreading. But more importantly, I think an agent of compassion is a person worth becoming. Thank you.